Back up a little bit, and we need to talk about the fact that not all skeletal muscle fibers are exactly the same as all skeletal muscle fibers. So this is what we've been looking about, at about a skeletal muscle fiber. And this is true. Um, there are just variations in the types of muscle fibers that exist. So do they all have myofibrils and mitochondria and calcium and all of this kind of stuff? They totally do. But they have um, predispositions for how quickly they're going to contract and predispositions for whether they are really, really good at using, um, at generating uh, ATP aerobically or anaerobically. So let's talk about the types of muscle fibers that exist. So um, first off, um, there are fast twitch and slow twitch muscle fibers. And what that has to do with is the maximal velocity of shortening, how quickly you respond upon, dis upon stimulus and how quickly the cross bridge cycling actually occurs. So um, in a fast fiber, cross bridge cycling is about four times as fast as it is in what we call a slow fiber. Now that's both good and bad. It's good because of course it's gonna be really responsive, but it's also really, really going to use up ATP very quickly because of course cross bridge cycling every single time you do the bind, power stroke, release, reposition, it's going to use a single ATP. So these use up about four times as much ATP as the um, slow ones. So you don't always wanna use those. The other thing is um, how it's set up for metabolism. So skeletal muscle, of course, goes through cellular respiration, but some skeletal muscle fibers have more enzymes for oxidative phosphorylation, phosphorylation oxidative phosphorylation going all the way through and generating lots and lots of ATP. Not very quickly though, um, but uh, generate ATP, a lot of ATP. Um, and then some skeletal muscle fibers are better set up for glycolysis without going through all, all the way through oxidative phosphorylation. So what's the difference when you look at them? Well, when you look at them, the ones that are predisposed to be oxidative fi um, fibers would have lots of mitochondria compares to, compared to the glycolytic fibers. And um, they would have really good blood flow to them, and they would have lots of myoglobin because you guys remember that myoglobin binds to and stores small quantities of oxygen. These usually are relatively smaller in diameter, and when you use staining techniques, they usually stain red because of the myoglobin that they have in them. Often they're called red muscle fibers. And then the other ones um, are primarily set up for glycolysis. Comparatively, they have fewer mitochondria, not zero mitochondria, they don't have very much myoglobin, which means that when you do a cross-section, they don't tend to stain very red. And um, they have fewer blood vessels around them, but they do have a big store of glycogen inside of them. Because of course, glycogen is what you use for glycolysis. They've got large stores of glycogen. They don't really depend on the bloodstream bringing them their glucose and their oxygen. Um, they are often called white muscle fibers. And they're good for fast births, but they're not going to last for very long. So um, going back, now each muscle fiber must be fast or slow and oxidative versus glycolytic. So in theory, that would give me two to the two kinds of muscle fibers or four, but really only three of them actually exist. There are what are called the slow oxidative that are the smallest in diameter and they basically can maintain contractions for the longest of each any of them slow oxidative <clears throat> SOs this includes like the postural muscles of the back like the erector spiny muscles and the um, quadratus lumborum muscles they're the first ones to get recruited they're going to last for a really long time think of them as like um, marathon runners of the muscle world. Not that marathon runners only have these. And then um, the fast oxidative ones. Um, so by the way, the slow ones are going to have l slow rate of cross bridge cycling, but, m but the energy is going to avail be available for a really long time because they use oxidative phosphorylation. And then there's going to be the intermediate diameter fast oxidative ones. 
These are not super common in the body, but they do exist. They are um, intermediate in strength and intermediate in longevity. So they're going to use up their ATP relatively quickly, but they're also going to generate quite a bit of it. Um, these are intermediate muscles. And then the fast glycolytic ones are the, um, like the biceps brachii. These are very, very strong, but they get their ATP primarily by glycolysis. They are the first ones to peter out on you. So, um, and then the one that doesn't exist is the slow glycolytic just doesn't exist. So what you have is in each muscle, depending on how the muscle evolutionarily has been used, you're going to have a mix of the three of these. So not all muscles look like this. Here's some variation in what you can see when you use the staining technique for muscles. And what can you change about a muscle? Well, the newest information that I have been able to fa find says that the type of training, and we'll talk about muscle training in just a minute, um, the type of training you do can switch between glycolytic and oxidative. For instance, if you were a weightlifter and then you started training for a marathon, you could, for instance, make more mitochondria and make more myoglobin, right? And so the cell could predispose itself for now more oxidative phosphorylation than glycolysis. Um, how effective people are at doing that seems to be uh, not decided yet. And then um, the, you can also, um, no, you can't. Um, the thing that we don't think can occur with the current level of knowledge that we have is that the fast twitch versus slow twitch, you can't switch between the two of them because that seems to have been developmentally determined by the type of myosin that is actually in the muscle fiber. And as far as we know, as far as I know, as far as the literature says, um, no switching between fast and slow or slow and fast twitch. So that's the type of muscles. And the next thing we'll do is, you know, go into skeletal muscle energy metabolism, which isn't very hard because you've already done metabolism in so much detail at the beginning of the semester.